been aggregated by EBAMP as CPT event uh, for medical CPTs at EQF level 7 and awarded 32 CPT credit points. You already know that the program is arranged in a combination of eight lectures with a group discussion and an examination. Today is the fourth lecture of the program on QC in mammography, CR, TR, and X-ray. I am Janakara Tahmina, studying medical physics in Bangladesh and also work at the CPCR. Today I am with you as moderator and we have got the presentation that we are going to a medical physicist at clinic and the clinic for diagnostic and interventional radiology at University Hospital Bonn, Germany and deputy senior medical physicist in the clinic for radiation therapy and clinical oncology. He is a lecturer at the state recognized MTRS school of the Brown University Clinic and lecturer also in the radiology course in the student training at the University of Bonn. He is a member at DGMP, DPG, Degro and Restro. Now we are going to our honorable speaker, Dr. Stephen Garbe. Sir, now story is yours. It's mine? Could I start now? Yes, sir. You can. Okay, yes, thank you very sir. much. Um, hello and welcome everybody around the world. I'm here from Germany and I would like to give you a talk about the quality, quality control on actually uh, conventional radio, radiology. Um, as I have been introduced, thank you very much for that. Um, I'm a medical physicist in, in, in an inter, inter, in interventional diagnostic radiology department. And uh, first of all, I would like to, oh yeah, I would like to, but I don't, I can't. Why it's not working? Okay. Um, I would like to give you a short introduction um, about the uh, uh, quality control itself. So why it's important that we have uh, quality control in radio diagnostics. And uh, yeah, the first part is, or the first part is that uh, the, the quality control is actually demanded by our authorities. So uh, it's mainly regulated on a legal on a legal basis. So you have guidelines. It depends on the country uh, which guidelines you have to follow, but there are guidelines. If there are no 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 guard guidelines, there the guidelines are given either by the vendor itself. So if the machine is going to be installed or commissioned or accepted, then the vendor has at least a, a certain or a, a, quite a bunch of uh, of parameters and properties which needs to be tested. And of course, I always recommend that if you are not satisfied with your legal requirements and the requirements by the vendor. We, I always say or always state that if there are specialties or individual settings in your department, let me say pediatrics, or you have uh, a certain patient population which is overweighted or something like that, then I would say that you should adjust your, your, your demands on this kind of uh, patients or uh, properties. So uh, another way of controlling uh, the quality is uh, that uh, if you uh, standardize the quality, you can start comparing it. Um, the comparison is not really those that, that you have a competition. It's more that uh, you can compare it among your department between different machines. That's the first one. And the second one is that if you are visited by authorities, so some countries have these mandatory uh, visiting of uh, authorities, then it is then they could check what have what have you done, and if you have deviations of the program which you should access, then you can discuss or you could find out where is the problem or is your machine having a problem. I would call it actually trending of the machine. So sometimes you see that machine starts aging and you see that the output of an X-ray tube is going down and you can actually see that with your quality control and that puts you in the position that you either 
telling the vendor that something needs to be done to improve the output from the X-ray tube, or in the worst case, you have to exchange your, uh, the X-ray tube. So uh, it is all about uh, patient safety and and uh, quality, image quality. So yeah, um, and the fourth thing I would like to stress is that there are reference level given in some countries, actually in most countries I know, is that among the EU, for example, we have a, a national uh, or even EU-wide reference levels. So we have compared in, among the EU where we could see uh, how the machines, which are actually most or more, more or less from the same vendor, how they perform in, let me say, Great Britain, Switzerland, Austria, it Italy, or even even in other in other countries. So there is a com this, the, 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 the the point of comparison is actually not negligible. I, I rather f feel secure if I could tell my colleagues we have problems with the output there, or we have problems with the field magnification or whatever. So I feel a little definitely more secure having. Is uh, the view of trending. So um, yeah, the quality control starts usually with uh, buying a machine, and the machine is then giving to you, handed over by the vendor, and you have to commission the machine, and you have to ex to, to do an acceptance test. Yeah, and then you have to figure out what what where are my guidelines. Usually, you have uh, uh, international engineering uh, code, or you have a national guidelines. Um, the, several countries do have their own, but if you do not have any, so if, if you are in a country where there is no guideline uh, given or no handed out or is still in preparation, then there are guidelines made by the IAI, so by the International Atomic Association. And you can have a have a look on that, and then you can say, okay, well, what are these guidelines? Does the vendor fulfill all these guidelines, or do we have to, or do we have a problem with the uh, with the um, with with, these, with those guidelines? Yeah. Um, so commissioning is first. And after the commissioning, you have to say, okay, these are the parameters which needs to be set and needs to be observed. And what do I then do now? I have to do a quality control of those parameters and properties. And that's called then constantly checks or constantly tests. And they're usually second line. So everything starts with the acceptance and the commission. And I always recommend if you get a new machine, speak with the vendor and tell the vendor, what are you going to use this machine for? Do you do standard or you do have special requirements? And these could be set up in the acceptance test or in the commissioning so that you can observe those parameters among the year or among a half a year or even a decade. And uh, the legal requirements sometimes or it's my personal point of view is sometimes the legal requirements really do not match all the requirements I would like to give to a machine. So that's the reason why I always recommend uh, tell, speak to, to the vendor and look what you got. I'm sorry, it's not moving. What, why is it not moving? Ah, here we are. Okay, yeah. Um, so, what are the uh, what are the physical properties of the X-ray device we have to check before we got to the imaging device? So, the first things is usually current, voltage, exposure, field size, distances. Uh, so, geometry. These are the first things we need we need to set up that the machine has to have the specifications. But in the end. For the diagnostics, it is important to see what is my image quality, because among the image quality, you or your physicians 
decide whether this is the diagnosis or it, is, it isn't or it isn't. So uh, a noisy image is most likely not helpful, even though you have lowered down the dose or you have uh, shrink down the, the field size, but you, you have to have you have to find optimized condition to have an image quality which enables you to have the best diagnostic. And of course, and then we come to the third part is uh, the the patient's safety is has to have have to be in the in, in also be considered. So um, the radio protection of the patient is important. Image quality and uh, the device, the X-ray device, usually influences uh, the X-ray device. Influences the image quality. There are some other the other parameters which influence the image quality. It's the image processing. So that is actually not related to the machine itself. So it's more than <clears throat> to the to the. Um, <clears throat> To the image which is already there, and then you get filters on that, or you ma manipulate it, or you get uh, some kind of uh, what would I say, uh, lung windows, lung lung windows, or windows, or whatever. And the third thing then is you have to watch those images as well. So you have to have a screen where you have to watch it, and then those screens could have problems. If you don't have the right quality of your screens, then maybe a good image is uh, displayed as a worse image. So you, you see there is another part you need to be quality assured is the uh, monitor itself. And then become, and, and in the end, there is a very important part is, what do we do if we have done the image, the image is perfect, everything is right. Uh, what do we do with it? Do we uh, copy it or how we archive it? And how we have to take care that the image quality, if we, let me say, the patient is coming again a second time and you would like to open up the wind, the open up the image and then you see after a year that the image quality has changed due to the image initial image quality to whatever reason. So this has to be avoided as well. So you see, there are several steps you have to follow among these, pros among this process. This triangle actually shows you what I already have said. The uh, in, as an introduction is that image quality, exposure, and, and the detector. So the X-ray device and the patient safety are the most uh, influencing param parameters to be checked to have a good quality control on uh, X-ray diagnostics. So yeah, the aims of uh, QC in diagnostics, I already pointed out uh, quite a bit of it, but uh, you have to find your appropriate appropriate uh, constancy test. You have to find them out. Out of the legal, as I said, on uh, it is the fourth point here, it is actually the legal ones are usually those you can't not really prevent doing them, but, uh, you also have could, could find some locals and you could so find those to, which are related to a vendor because some tests which are required by a legal on legal basis maybe not could apply to uh, to this machine because this machine has certain devices which are not fulfilling those guidelines so then you have to find a test which actually simulate or does something similar to that and a very important part is uh, the third point, look for the frequencies of the check. So what, when, or how often do we have to do that? And sometimes you ask yourself, why do I have to do it every day? Or why do I have to do it quarterly or biannual bi or semi-annual or annual? And um, some though of those frequency are actually demand on legal basis, but Nobody tells you if, if on legal basis you are, have been asked to do it annually, you can do it also semi-annually and, and, and to check those. This is not definitely forbidden. And if you feel more secure looking for some parameters in a, in a, in a, in a shorter frequency, why shouldn't you do that? I mean, this is not 
it's not it's, it's not forbidden but the minimum requirements checking its annual that is most likely give, given by via legal 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 requirements and there are so some other uh, boundary conditions which usually are def definitely not in the scope of quality control is the qualification of the personnel so who is doing who is doing these uh, constant checks who is actually there if the machine is commissioned and who actually observed the acceptance test who actually does that and i have some experience uh, by because i'm actually hired by the authorities sometimes as an expert and, uh, uh, and traveling around europe and seeing some de departments and see how some personnel is actually doing a, a, a constant check and if they are not have a supervision or they have been told what they should do they do just do some chemical after a certain procedure and they are not knowing actually what they if they didn't have not understand what they're doing the constant check could be worthless the athlete could be worthless if you just repeat something only without knowing what you're doing then i will usually find out that constant check is useless you have to you have to know what you're checking and why you have to check and if and if there is a deviation uh, you should know if it's severe or not and if i exceeded the uh, tolerance level is that what kind of what kind of consequences do i have to follow that's the reason why i usually point on that be assured be try to get your personnel trained in a decent manner and uh, uh, the better the personnel is trained, the better your quality quality assurance and your quality uh, checks are. And then, as I told in the beginning, speak with the vendor. What does the vendor really could do? And some of the requirements maybe could not be matched. Then you again, then you should talk to the vendor how he actually gonna manage to prove this property of this machine. And sometimes you figure out that they have some other tests which are actually similar uh, as the other. And you really could, the most of the vendors are very keen in figure, figuring out what they could do. And uh, so talk to the vendors if the machine is being set up. And there is some other part which I figured out that in a department, it is usually very good if you have a lot of skills and quite some experience um and you have to share the experience you have with all your colleagues and not claiming it on your own this is i mean this is modern talk uh, if you're really talking modern is teamwork of course so especially in quality control or quality assurance if you do not share your expertise you stay alone and maybe your quality control is done by somebody else which is not good skilled so i i personally recommend give the expertise you have to all your colleagues so then you can be sure that your quality control is definitely better so yeah what is what is the scope of testing um what happens if you uh, if you are testing in a different frequency or if you are uh, something which could not be tested as i told or uh, if you have maybe a very new device which is, has not been a guideline, so uh, maybe it's not in, into a guideline. You have a not new X or a machine which has no guidelines, or you have only a few parts which you could do. So um, talk to the vendor again, and there is something uh, which is coming along my talk. It will be called the NEMA, and then you've. In the NEMA, the, the vendors or the manufacturers usually have stated how their machine works and how the, uh, the parameters or properties are actually going to be made. Um, related to the uh, performed investigations, uh, you have to be sure that your acceptance sense covers all of your demands. It really covers all. So let me say uh, an example. Uh, you have an X-ray machine with um, having 40 kV up to 140 kV. And if you do the acceptance test only with 40 kV and, 140, uh, and 140 kV, 
and the mainly used K uh, voltage you, you, you need is 100. And you have no acceptance test with the most used uh, voltage, you have a problem, I think. So be assured what is, what is, what is the freak or the voltage you would like to have um, at most. I mean, sometimes you may not know that. So then I recommend do as much steps as you could. But out of experience, you figure out that there is some mainly used voltage. Or another thing is the automatic exposure control. Uh, for example, doing you, uh, are you doing investigations with contrast media? If you're doing uh, investigations with contrast media, what, what, does the, what does the automatic exposure control do? No, no, no. It sees uh, a dense, a dense material in in the image, and then the automatic control try to get the contrast right. So the dose you get there is maybe three times or four times more if if the contrast media is in. But that's not good because actually you do do not need the four times more why you have the contrast media into the patient. Maybe you could do it in a more clever way if you may choose your voltage right ahead of it, and you do switch off the automatic exposure control because you already know what is the mainly used absorption coefficient. I only would like to give some examples where you actually could say, okay, that is something I should consider ahead of using the machine. The reference levels which you have to follow, which may be given on legal or or uh, from the authorities, you all you already have to check. I unfortunately it's a German, but don't worry. I only would like to tell the tell you that there are a reference level for several investigations here. Uh, here in this uh, table, I have uh, for head, uh, breast, and uh, for the spinal cord, uh, for the abdominal part, for the pelvis, and for the hips. And there you see on the right side is DFP, that is uh, the dose area product. And that's all the reference levels which are given by the German authorities to us, to the, to, to the users. And this reference level should not be exceeded. If you have a standard patient. And now we come to a very interesting part. What is a standard patient? What is a standard patient? I hope somebody of you actually would know what a standard patient is. But I'm. There are definitely, yeah, 70 kilograms I found here. It's actually good, but, but you have to consider is either male or female. That's very important because the standard, the standard male 70 kilograms is definitely something else than 70 kilograms with the male, uh, with the female. Yeah, of course, 70 kilograms with the male. It's okay, but with the female, you definitely have another kilogram and you have another size. So, but, and then you can see, um, do my patients match those standard considerations? But yeah, you will figure out that maybe your department has not standard patients. So what will happen if you don't have the standard patients? Then you will exceed those reference levels. And in Germany, actually, we have then to uh, to write note down why we exceeded those reference levels. So I mean, this could be uh, overweight or intensive uh, second image or whatever. There are several reasons why you could do that. Well, why this could happen. But I have to. You have to be sure that you have to be sure that you know. What are your the reference level you are and what are you testing against? So that is that is your that is your upper threshold actually. I would say. And there is another problem uh, before you start really doing constancy checks is uh, how are the acceptance test values, which are your basic values, how they are measured. So and then you then you ask how they are measured. I mean, I measure then how. I should measure them. The problem is the equipment. Um, the machine might the, the machine stays the same, but the equipment might be changed because you made the acceptance test do with the uh, uh, equipment from the vendor, and then you start doing the constancy check with your equipment. What happens? Usually, you have a gap, or an offset, or some other values, and in those cases, 
I always recommend that you either have to do a cross calibration. So you measure with the vendors and you measure with yours, and then you see what is your value, what is the vendor's value, and then you can cross check that. Or you say that the acceptance test is done with your equipment and not with the vendor equipment. So as a note for those who would like to introduce a new X-ray device, think about the measurement equipment you should also order together with the machine. Don't rely on the vendor's equipment. I usually only rely on my own equipment because I know what my, my, my uh, electrometers, dosimeters or chambers are doing. Good. Uh, if no, re oh, uh, so and then again, what happens if there is no reference given? So what, what what do we do if we have no reference levels given? What what happens? I mean, it, you could do investigation or you could do some kind of imaging where is no reference given. Either the investigation is absolutely new, or or you do something which is not uh, referenced by legal basis, but you would like to check whether the value is good or not. What do you do then? Any anybody know anybody an idea? Yes, you, you could actually comp compare with your colleagues. That would actually be a very good idea. Look what the colleagues have done. Maybe even it's nothing, not necessary has to be in, 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 in your own country. You already could do, you could see what other, other people in other countries have done to uh, check those properties of the machine. Um, and uh, yeah, it, to the measuring devices, uh, it's not only the electrometers and the dosimeters and uh, the ion chambers or tissue equivalent phantoms. It's also uh, the uh, the other devices you need to uh, absorb something. For example, I give down here some the acceptance test and concept text. There are guidelines here in Germany. It's called the German norms. Uh, there are the CRFs from the uh, from America or the, or, or TGs for uh, Great Britain. Or uh, is, there's also an EU guideline among, among the European community. So this is, I'm not paid by the vendors, so that's something I have to say in advance. This is, an, this is just a, a short, a little overview about machines you could actually use. These are actually not my machines, uh, only the one in the lower left country is mine, and the, the other ones are actually used by other colleagues. These are uh, uh, those, those, those meters for, uh, for mammography on the left side, and the other one in the middle is actually used for, uh, for X-ray machines. And for the QC, you see on the right-hand side, for example, one of those quality phantoms. Uh, they, they are usually divided up in, uh, in 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 different steps and contrast. I mean, we will come to this later. I only would like to sh show you that those diodes needs to have a very important part. A very important part of those diodes is they need to be calibrated, and you have to check whether your devices are calibrated in the right manner. That means are they calibrated for the energy you use? For example, if you use an ion chamber or a diode for an energy which they are not actually dedicated to, you may have problems. So especially in mammography, you will have a hard time to measure with a conventional ion chamber. You have to have a mammography, so an ion chamber which is dedicated to 20 up to 30 kV. And therefore you need a calibration certificate. It no matter which vendor, but I can recommend don't do your ionization chamber measurements or your diet measurement with, di with diets which, which are not accepted for, for energies lower than 30 kV. So check, check your certificate. So now we come to the, uh, uh, to the mammography. Here you see um, a tomothesis mammography. This is a mammography which has the, pro the, the capability to move the hat ar around the breast. 
and uh, so it's you're going to be a 3D image from the breast. What do we test with those machines or with this machine? You you either on the left hand side is is the German is the German legislation. Don't try to read it. It's German. I, I have the excerpt on the left hand side. It, it's, it, it is contrast. It is dose. Geometry and time. Those are the four properties which are tested for this device. Contrast, dose, geometry and time. So how, how they how, how this is tested? This is one of those mammography phantoms. You see here in the very low corner, you see the numbers 0, 45, 60, and 90 degrees. These are line pairs per millimeters. If you uh, if you image that, then, then then you see there are in the in these uh, let there are small lines, in, and you can see the line the line profiles. I will show you a device later on. Where you actually could uh, see a little bit more in detail. Then you see an absorption step. You see, uh, in the upper part is, is 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 there is a part where you can actually irradiate entirely through the phantom, and then the thickness of the PMMA starts to increase up to a fully absorption step. That is the black the black block on the left hand side. Then you make could change the uh, the, the black part in the middle. This is an SDNR, so this is a signal-to-noise ratio uh, uh, device where you could actually calculate it, calculate how good is your signal related to the to, to to the noise coming from the entire phantom. I just give the formula. There is a formula where, where, where you can derive that, but out of the thickness, you could actually figure out what noise you have. You can you can choose on the right hand side in the very right corner. There you see the other uh, structure parts. Uh, you either could uh, recognize uh, you should see numbers in the in the third row. You see, you, you should see numbers. Um, in the uh, first row you should see grids, and in the third one, in the second one you should uh, you you should you should see something which would simulate the micro classifications. And usually the third level should be reached. That is something in mammography which, have, which gives you the uh, a, a good way of seeing your micro calcification because these are the smallest the, the smallest objects you actually could see. Does anybody know what is the smallest uh, resolution for a micro calcification which could be seen in mammography? Is anybody there has an idea? What is the smallest? The smallest. Uh, um, I mean, it's called microcalc, so it should be something with micro, of course. But is there anybody saying what is the what what, uh, what dimension we are? 0.15 millimeters. No, we actually were definitely half of it. So 70, 74 micrometers is actually the size we see in in mammography. If you would like to see that, then you then, then you should realize that either your detector has to be extremely good in resolution, and your device you watch your image should be also very, have a, have a very good resolution. But on the other hand, your quality control should check that that you have a resolution better than at least 25 micrometers. So you see that the demand changes on what you're doing. That is very important to see that. Not among all the others, you have the same. You have the same demands. With the demand, the the values and the tolerances changes. Oops. So another thing which which is actually needed for mammography is uh, the CDMM uh, according the uh, AQPC. Um, this is actually a gold a gold cluster. And the gold cluster has different sizes and different thicknesses. You see that on the right hand side, the diameters in millimeter and the gold thicknesses in micrometer. So what do we get out of that? So with the, with the diameter, we get the uh, lateral contrast uh, or the, the lateral resolution. And with the thickness, we could see the whether the absorption works right with our energy or not. So uh, these are the... Uh, these are the minimum requirements you should achieve. Actually, a gold diameter at 0.1 millimeter, you should actually could recover, and the thickness uh, uh, smaller than 1.68 micrometers, you should achieve. That is something 
if you would like to do that in conventional radio in, in conventional radiography you, you may you may fail because this is maybe not possible with, with your if you have a lung a lung examination for example so again there is there is a there is a past 2054 that is the, again a german one there is written down the the frequency how to check for contrast geometry dose and time needs to be done For example, we, we, we do the contrast for th several thicknesses. Of course, the breast could have, have different, several thicknesses. So there are three standard sizes of, uh, of breast thicknesses to 20, 40, and 60 millimeters. Uh, then you check there the uh, MAS, which you, uh, with, a, with a certain KV, usually you, you use a, a rhodium, uh, a rhodium um, source. And uh, this, uh, the KV is, ex uh, is uh, adapted to the thickness. You start with 26, 28, and then 30 KV for the thickest field. Then you should extract out of those values you, the parenchyme dose. This is then not going to be calculated. We, uh, 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 the calculation differs on, uh, uh, on, your, um, on your algorithm. Usually, um, out of the entrance dose, you can directly calculate if you because it is almost homogeneous then you can calculate the pan dose and you have to do that in three dimension and in two dimensions that is very important because for the tomosynthesis you have a three dimensional a three dimensional uh, uh, three dimensional object and then you should see in the structural plate three different depths you should see that is something you should actually uh, recover and the exposure time has to be adapted to the dose um, how these, how the geometry is done, as you see in the middle part, you see that the the, the structure plate is moving in in, 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 dep in different depths, and then in the different depths, at a certain at a certain level, you should uh, have a, a qualified image in, in different depths. So the deeper it is, it is, should be in a, in on a on a deeper angle or, or a larger angle. Uh, the, the closer you come to the surface, the the, the, the the smaller the angle should be where you have uh, a sharp image. Now we come from the G, from the mammography. We have a short, just a short glimpse on the C arm because on Sunday I will give a talk on interventional radio uh, on QC on interventional systems. There I will have a more detailed look on the uh, three-dimensional or interventional radiography. I only would like to say that. Uh, for the C arms, there's uh, definitely you have to check definitely other things than in mammography. You have you have to have a look more more on the those area product, and then you should see what is what phantom is actually accepted by the vendor because some some phantoms and with, uh, do not match with the vendors with the vendors uh, um, uh, setups. Then you should check what kind of either he is uh, delivering one or you have to buy one but the important part is on, on the right hand side you see that there is an acceptance given an acceptance level and at the tolerance level so uh, oops i'm sorry i'm sorry i have to be i have to be too fast sorry i have to be i have to go back but it's not going back sorry uh, here we are. So then we have to go uh, the left grid and the central axis. Um, so you see that the acceptance in uh, radiography uh, should uh, are really accept 40% deviation in 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 uh, position of a grid, and uh, 0.8 line pairs per millimeter is the minimum you should actually accept. If you would accept 0.8 line, per, line pairs per millimeters in mammography, you would fail with all diagnosis in mammography. There you actually need something like three or four line pairs per millimeters. So you have to be definitely, you have to have a higher resolution there. Then you need the scan, the scan time of these of the C arm. So you have to check whether the angle per time changes and in, in the manner you sh it changed before. Then the scan angles are there, right? So if you would like to have a 45 degree uh, angle, you have to check that it's geometry. 
And of course, and yet now we come to a very important part, which I, use, which I find usually a little bit underestimated is the images per scan. So how many, if I do a scan with a C-arm, how many images do I actually do? Uh, because they are given in the protocol. I will say something on that on Sunday, that, that those protocols are very tricky and you really have to dive or to, to, to dig into it. You really have to dive on those protocols and figure out how many images need to be shown and how many do you need. But you can imagine that the number of images are, are very close related to the dose you're given. So be, be, be aware what you're doing there with your, with your number of images. Now we come to the uh, monitors. And here you see a classical SMPTE uh, monitors. You, you see there are different, um, different grayscales. And uh, these grayscales are actually 18 steps. These 18 steps you will also see on the right-hand side with the quality control image. Um, and in Europe is it now demanded that you uh, f uh, get out of those values a, a differential differential luminescence versus full level luminescence over a p-value. Uh, the formulation would actually be rather a little bit complicated, but I only would like to say that there is a. You can see that in the in the DICOM in the DICOM statement 3.14, you can see how this is how the how the value is derived. How the value is derived. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Somebody is asking what effect of the signal to noise ratio uh, is, is affecting the uh, uh, annual glenda, the, uh, the AGD. Of course. Um, the problem is uh, what is the difference between a tumor? A, a breast tumor and mycocalcification. How many monitor, how many Hounsfield units is the difference? Any idea? What is the difference between a calcification, a mycocalcification, calcification and a DCIS uh, 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 breast tumor? What is the density difference? How many, how many Hounsfield units you ex you actually think is the difference? And then you can state how, how how large could the noise be to distinguish between those. If you have microcalcification, which is very young, so it is not really in, it is already there for several years, so the calcification already has become or get more CaCO3, so it is or still have some lipids and inside, then the density is actually very very close to uh, to the tumor value, and then actually. 10 Hounfields and 10 Hounfields units difference could be the difference between microcalcification and the tumor. And if you and if you then have a, have a noise value which is already eight, and you would like to see a signal of 10. I mean, I'm not very good in statistics, but I, you easily could figure out that if you have a bad signal noise to bad signal to noise ratio among your phantom. Which is which is actually extremely homogeneous, homogeneous, and then you will see in a real image a difference of two Hounsfield units. You will have a hard time because you are in mammography. You are actually very you actually see pixel wise. It's not like uh, chest chest X rays. Chest X ray you look don't look for the pixel, but in mammography you you look for the pixel. So the pixel is ex actually your your real value to look at. And so the SNNR is giving you is giving you not even a hint. It's actually you really have to see that the SNR should meet the requirements which are given, and they're usually less than two percent of the. In, there should be less than two percent of the average. Uh, so if if you have a homogeneous phantom of a certain sickness, the noise ratio will have to be less than two percent of the homogeneity. The entire formula. I could give you, if you like to have and write me an email, I give you the entire formula to that. I think that would, would really exceed the talk right now. I'm sorry. Would that answer your question for, for the first hand? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Now we, now, now we, now there, there's another, another issue in quality control, which is actually neglected or usually put not really in the first line. It is 
in which room do you do your x-rays and you look at your image in which room you think and say oh, it doesn't matter which room i mean there's a monitor and i look on the monitor and then the, i could see the image no it's not right it's not right because if the background luminosity of your room is larger than at 50 you may have you will have a hard time to see the difference of four for hound field units but if your luminosity is actually something by at 500 you won't see even even 40 pounds field units so you really have to be careful with your background luminosity in your room that is always i'm always recommend look in the in germany we, we call them room classes so we really divide the rooms into classes and you see there on the on the very low table that you see uh, the uh, in mammography you should have you should see the word quality control even in, on the black, on the white, and on the gray one. And, and, and you, should, you should see all letters. And I can tell you, we have rooms where you can't see all letters, even, even though it's the same image, because of the background luminosity of your room. So look at that as well. It's also, this is always a parameter you have to check in your quality control. So how, how you do that? Uh, how do you do monitor controlling? Uh, you see on the left-hand side, a very lower left corner, you see somebody sitting in front of, an, of, uh, of, a, of one of those monitors having the device on the right-hand side and putting that in a certain distance. The distance is to be described at least 10, 10 centimeters. It could be more, it could be less. You have to be sure that you face uh, that you face the uh, the the device on the square in the middle of the image, and you have to be sure that the background luminosity of your room, so your room class, has to be accepted. Otherwise, the homogeneity uh, is not accepted. In Germany, we really uh, we really distinguish uh, that that certain devices, mammographies, mammography monitors, are not allowed to say to to are situated in a room where the room class is higher than one. So prepare your rooms to watch the right image. So what, what else do we have to do? Semi-annual is the minimum illuminescence, maximum illuminescence. We have to use the contrast from minimum to maximum. Then we have to check if the monitor is off. How, how is, the, sorry? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, monitors and how the monitor is off. Then you check those luminescence curve. That is the uh, that is the curve I also said the DICOM curve I already showed. Then you check the homo homogeneity, and then you should check the homogeneity of all your all your monitors among the mon monitors. You, I mean, it is. Uh, we usually you usually have maybe two one more than one side where you. A look at your images and you check that if you're sitting in one room and sitting on the, the other room you see the same or is comparable then you have to look the color brilliance or, or the grayscale brilliance you have to check that and the uniformity of the uh, of the uh, of the images so and for the for the uniformity you you see these those test images this is the black one and the white one and you have to see whether on your screen this is an homogeneous image or not Homogeneous means your Ill illuminescence should not vary more than more than ten percent. So I, I would like to point a little bit to the dental radiography. I don't know who is actually doing uh, dental radiography. I would like to tell you that it's actually almost the same to mammography. It's just a little bit different what the phantoms uh, are related, but you actually have the same images and the same machines looking at the monitors. And on the left, very left-hand side, you see one of those line, one of those line pairs phantoms for tooth, for dental radio, for dental radiography. Illuminescence is uh, candela per square meters. You got it? Candela per square meters. 
सर प्लीज एक्सप्लेन लिटिल बिट मोर थंडिला टू स्क्वेयर मीटर्स इज इल्यूमिनेसेंस एज फार एज आई नो बट आई एम नॉट नेटिव इंग्लिश बट एज फार एज आई नो स्कैंडलर कैंडलर टू स्क्वेयर मीटर्स इज दी इल्यूमिनेसेंस इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन प्लीज राइट ऑन द चैट बॉक्स विल टेक इट आफ्टर लेक्चर good okay so um so this was a little ex, uh, a little excourse to the uh, to the dental radiography i would, would like to say if you do, if you have to do if you have to deal with that there are also guidelines available but usually you have to do actually the same checks than a mammography they are not that not not that strict so now we come to portal systems portable system so you have a machine x-ray machine which is used in different at, at different locations of different departments and maybe also in intensive care so uh, or emergency rooms that i think that is uh, one of the most common use of x-rays uh, in departments which are not related to radiology and uh, the first recommendation to quality control i would say is their skill your is skill your see the see how the persons are experienced because usually you are not the person from the radio, radiology department do the do the x rays and uh, therefore you have to do a good kv calibration you really have to look that the leakage radi radiation is extremely good because in this departments you don't have the time to watch to all your parameters if they are well defined the in the emergency room it's a matter of time the machine has to be put on the patient and then you press expose and then the image is there so you really have to be extremely careful careful what you're doing so the the the, the beam quantity is definitely something you check you should check you you should check on a regular basis for those machines next next machine i would like to uh, draw your attention to is pediatric devices even especially their uh, personnel is demand which knows that uh, the pediatric uh, reference levels are different to the uh, uh, adult levels that is something you should know you you say okay it's clear but i can tell you that i have visited departments which which i didn't know that uh, should uh, have a pediatric filtering to uh, reduce the variation and even though the quality control have to be done with the reduced uh, with the filtering and not with the conventional acceptances by the vendor because this is our this are special devices which are then have the ability to do pediatric but they are not specialized for pediatric usually they are they are also used for adults i only there are some which are dedicated to pediatric but most of them have they have double use and be be aware that the that you have a, a quality control even for pediatric filtering and especially for adapted fetal sizes if you have a, a chest x-ray of a newborn you should shrink down your uh, your blades really to a very small image uh, field size and you should do your quality control on that field size and not for the adult field size of course and uh, the uh, different those reference values for better rhetoric among the you are given so there are different uh, values there yeah mm, here I, it is just for those who are interested in Uh, he, that is that is my simulation for a child so it's a it's a water can and uh, there is the the image device there's the imager and there's a mobile the mobile uh, uh, x-ray and i try to adapt those directly in the pediatric department so i look for field sizes look for the charging decay especially for those uh, uh, devices look for the angulation Be, be, be a, try to be ap so really straight straight down and not do some kind of uh, uh, angulation uh, look for the automatic exposure control if it's on or not and if it's on be aware that if it works properly for kids and not for adults and check the filtering that is definitely something in, in quality control check the filtering and check the quality control for your filtering definitely so this was more or less a little bit more in the uh, experimental so in the uh, in the practical part now we come a little bit more uh, in the in the general part um, 
Uh, what, uh, what do you do on uh, quality control if you enter the room daily on daily basis? I mean, the first thing I usually do if I'm entering X-ray room and we have not patient treatment started so far, you should actually have a, a, a view on your machine. Uh, sometimes somebody have been in a room after you have done the last patient on the last day and you should check what, a, what, ha what had happened there. So, and uh, look, that the warm-up procedure is written down so that everybody could do the warm-up procedure. Everybody is introduced to the warm-up pr procedure. And please check what is in, in the warm-up procedure. What is the what are the properties and the parameters needs to be checked? Write that down and uh, let it signed by the by the person who has done it, and signed by by another person who controlled what the person has done. So two signs I recommend. Beam quality. That is also a very important parameter. Uh, and KV and uh, current, current and uh, the current and the voltage is one part, but the beam quality itself. So, in you can measure the best with the half layer, half half value layer. So that's a typical phantom, which uh, for certain energies layers the intensity by fifty percent. And if you have one of those for your certain energies you usually use, then you should try to do, to do those check on at least half year basis. I, the most of the protocols I know they recommend annually. I actually recommend semi-annually. A light field, uh, X-ray field congruence is also very important. If you uh, try to put your patient into a certain in a certain situation then you adjust your x-ray device with a light field but you have to really to check whether your light field and your x-ray field are coincide and uh, at least two percent of it of the sid is the tolerance you should uh, not exceed there field size indicator so on the field side there's maybe written no now you have 20 by 18 and then you check 20 by 18 and it is 21 by 19. So all, all there, you should say that the, that, that the indicator of, of the field size, that the real field size should not exceed 2%. Um, beam, uh, beam alignment. So be, be sure that your center axis of the center X. So is, is, be aware that it is not angulated or deviated or, or, ha, or has torsion. So check the field size and check the center of axis. So also, those there two percent of the SID. Focal spot size is maybe something you are not really familiar with, but you know, the spots, the focal post spot size is really something which uh, is has a huge amount, a huge uh, impact on your image quality. And um, how to check that? How to, oh, sure, sorry. How to check that? Sorry, again, I'm already too far. How to check that? I would recommend that you go, go into the National Electrical Manufacturer Association guidelines. You can get that in, 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 in every country. Unfortunately, it is not free of charge. You have to pay for that. But I can recommend you how to measure the focus spot size. I would do, do it annually, actually. Uh, you can actually see there. On Sunday, I will give you a little bit more introduction how these uh, National Electro Manufacturer Association guidelines are used. Um, now we come to the X-ray generator. Uh, you have to check uh, the, line the linearity of the voltage. So if you increase the voltage that is really linear and it's not 120 is 118 there. And then you, see, then, then you should calibrate that uh, with, the cali with the voltmeter. You have to check the exposure time. So if, if, if uh, you have, uh, let me say 120 kV image and the, your auto exposure control says, to, to 8.3 8 8 milliseconds, then you have to be sure that is also 8.3 milliseconds and not 10. So that is something you should also check. 
then there is something which uh, is called the milligray versus MA, MAS. It's just more or less the output that is done by with an uh, ionization chamber. And the automatic exposure control, I already noticed that this is something you really have to check whether the automatic control is working properly. Um, if, if you still have a machine which have grids, you should whether you should see whether the grid make artifacts or not. I would here uh, recommend check that annually and the grid, grid alignment. And uh, at the end, the electricity is safety uh, so that the machine is really safe and not some cabling is opened or I already had a machine where I got a shortcut while I touching one of the sensors. Uh, so that happens. So, but this is not really into the quality control. x ray devices is also electric devices. So this was the part of the quality control. Now I will give you an example um, of a sheet of paper where we check our machine. So I hope that I could, uh, is always is again in German, but I try to, I, I hope that you actually see the, 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 uh, the, I could, hopefully I could get the, the good translated. So on the left-hand side, you see uh, the units and what you actually see. Spannung means uh, voltage and strom means, uh, you, you see it at the units. And now you see in the middle, in the middle, these are the devices you are checked. The line pairs per millimeters, that is, that is a typical uh, phantom for line pairs per, mil per millimeters. That is something which is actually should be used in the acceptance test. And is usually involved in the full, in the full uh, the phantom in the lower corner. And then there you see the dynamic stats from white to black. And if you really look carefully, unfortunately, uh, as you see, my imaging is not good for, the, for diagnostics. You should see circles in the inner circle, just 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 near to the uh, near to the steps. You should see circles, at least four, and that's something you should see. This is something you should check on on the uh, as a concept to check from uh, re refer to the acceptance test. This is should be done monthly. So check the check the energy as the, the, the dose for certain field sizes, check the voltage and the current for certain field sizes, check the resolution, uh, check whether the, your, your field in 90 degrees and in zero degrees is, is the same. You see gravity could be a problem. Then you, you, you should count the steps. You should see the contrast and you look for artifacts. That is something you, that is what, what we do in, for a conventional x ray machine in monthly basis. Now we come to something where we do it uh, KV related. So we have certain KV steps. That is something you have to agree in the acceptance test. We agreed in 70 KV and 102. It's funny, 102? No, it's not funny. This is actually, uh, this vendor could not give 100 KV. Could, he could only give 102. So you should do your acceptance of 102. Then you see, uh, you measure the dose, you measure the uh, illuminescence, and you measure the resolution. And on the left-hand side is called uh, with uh, automatic exposure control, and as, uh, the other one is manual. So you, you uh, type everything in manual, and you don't do X, X uh, uh, with the automatic exposure control. And this is, that is what we also do monthly. Yeah, I think I'm already close to the end of my time. As, as far as my clock is already an hour, oh, an hour, one hour is over. Yes, uh, yes, our time has over. We can go to, if you finish. I only have two slides. In short, speak. yes, sir. Please uh, finish okay. your presentation so, in short. So, uh, there's something which I have not been in my lecture. That is uh, bone density X-ray devices. I didn't tell something about that. I don't know if somebody is is doing uh, X-rays uh, with uh, don't with density measurements. I have nothing said about films because in Europe we have no radi radiographic films. Maybe you should consider if there's somebody who would like to have uh, more information about films, we should consider another lecture on films because it is really a tough idea. I have nothing said about experimental pack, uh, setups like my setup here with the uh, water can. 
and I didn't say anything about DICOM debugging. This is, this is, you can do a lot of things uh, checking your machine by looking into the DICOMs you get out of an image. I didn't tell anything about that. Uh, and I didn't tell anything about interventional devices because there is a lecture on the 13th. So on Sunday is a lecture on inter interventional devices. And that's the reason why I didn't tell anything or less to the interventional devices. So there's a summary and a take home message. That's just something you, you should take home. What do you do in your tomorrow or what is your X-ray device? That is the first thing you have to consider. Then is your personal skills and experience enough? Are the requirements uh, during the acceptance and commissioning by the vendor, are they fulfilled? Check the national, national guidelines for the parameters to be checked by the constant quality check control. Be aware of a tolerance level. So don't be afraid if you fail by 20%, if the tolerance level is 40%, you are good. And measuring device should also met the demands and precision of and, and the range you're doing. So if you have a device and you measure and you have 30 kV up to 120 kV, should that look that your equipment measure this range and not measure only at 70 kV. And if there are not any guidelines, I recommend go to the IAI. Hey, they usually have guidelines which guides you. So then thank you for your attention. And now I think it's open for questions, and I hope you found your key. This guy didn't. Yes, Jana, please take the questions from Jerry. Yes, thank you, sir, for your excellent words. I think our participants are benefited from here. Can I, you I have one question. I have one question here. Uh, the, 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 uh, he's asking about the uh, uh, QC kit. Uh, I think this is a lecture and I should be careful which company I would prefer or not. Uh, there are a lot of uh, QC uh, measurement devices on the market. I showed some companies which I would recommend. So if you see them, you see I use them. So I'm, I'm pretty confident with those, but there is definitely not something. You should look what you got to measure and look to the vendor, what he's using and then try to figure out what you could actually do with the vendor in the acceptance test. And uh, yeah, there's somebody who's using films. Yes, uh, but unfortunately the time was not enough to get on the films because there, there's too many things you have to consider in developing the films and uh, to calibrate those films. Uh, how, we do the, how do we compress the breast on during mammography? Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't tell about that. It is about the pressure you put to the, to the yeah. Um, if you look into the, um, into the vendors, they usually give recommendation about sizes of breasts. Uh, as a male, it sounds a little bit weird if I'm telling something about breast sizes, but it is really, really that the compression, the compression is dedicated to age and dedicated to breast size. And, uh, Actually, my TAs actually gave me a course on which breast got which breast compression, and uh, it is actually something you should agree in the beginning. You start with your machine, what you expect as breast size range. I'm sorry for this strange male word, breast size change, uh, but you, you really have to co consider what breasts are you gonna see, and which are you gonna image, and then you. Uh, in, in, in the quality control itself, it is clear the six, 60 millimeters has a compression, the 40 millimeters has a compression, the 20 millimeters has a compression. But I mean, PMMA is not compressible, so it is hard to say. Usually my TAs tell me that push as much as you can. Sorry for this comment, sorry. So any more questions? Yes, sir. Um, now I pick uh, two, two questions together uh, because they are related to each other. Can mm. I please loudly? Can you hear now? Yeah, it's better. What remedial action can be taken if a medical facility has not performed any commissioning and acceptance testing on equipment? Shall we depend on the constancy test made by other physicists or biomedical engineers? 
It's a good question. For unexperienced persons, I would I usually, I, uh, I recommend, I would recommend if, he, if he's unexperienced and he really feel not very secure doing commissioning, I would recommend if there's a possibility to, to have an experienced person from maybe not another clinic to get them involved. That is something I would recommend. If he, if he has to do that, then he has to very strict to work together with the, with the vendor. The vendor usually has experience in setting up the machine because it's not the first one they buy, uh, they, they sell. So that's, I think, I think that, is, that is a good way. Uh, I try to, if I get a call from a young colleague, I usually try to get help from distance or actually come to the place and help there. This is something I, I like to do because maybe I see something or I have ideas what how to do something. So get experience, get, get, get to places where you can learn something. This is always something I recommend also to my young colleagues change, look at other places, what they do. Would, would, that, would that answer the question or is there still something open? Or, or do I miss something? Thank you, sir. It's another question. What are the yes, dose sir. metrics for, what are the dose metrics for diagnostic reference level and mammography and what are the values in, in Germany? So uh, we, we only have one value that is actually the uh, AG, AGD and this is 1. 1.4 milligram per exposure. So in a mammography, you usually do two or four exposures for conventional mammography. So it is then approximately 4.4 milligram for all four images, as far as I remember. Sorry, uh, that, but that's something I have to look up. Uh, you really, uh, but I think, no, 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 I'm right. It's 1.4 milligram per image. And you will exceed it with large breasts, you will exceed this value. That's for sure, unfortunately. Sir, can I pick another one? Hello, sir. Yeah. Can I pick another one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what QC kit do you recommend for extra machine, um, CT, CRM, and mammography? Uh, for what? What do I recommend for what? Could you spell that, please? I'm sorry. Well, what? Well, I, I didn't get the last word. I'm sorry for that. Okay. I'll write it down. Well, write it down, please. Okay, sir. Because I didn't get the question so okay, far. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, write the question down. That is easier to answer. Okay. Ah, yeah. Okay, my email. That's pretty sure. Uh, should I write it on in the chat? So can you see? What uh, you recommend for X-rays? Oh yeah. I already. Yeah, this question is very hard to answer. Um, so, but what you have seen is that I, I said you have to have to you have to check the contrast. You have to check the dose. You have to check the luminosity and the and the geometry. So, um, for example, a good luminosity meter, a good chamber, a good electrometer, and a good phantom. The phantom I showed actually there are varieties among the countries. It's vendor dependent, but the one I showed is actually international available. That has a good line pair thing and a good contrast and good uh, steps. 
but you have to look into your national guidelines what is actually uh, recommended i will i will tell you i will give you on sunday um, a little bit more on the british part so they have different different uh, uh, phantoms for contrast but as you see so you have to fulfill contrast dose exposure geometry and luminescence would that answer it And uh, I write my email uh, uh, in the chat. Shouldn't I? Should I am? Yeah? I think we have covered all the questions. So that's my email for those who would like to contact me. If you write now, maybe I can answer on, on Sunday also some questions. Thank you so much, sir. I have, I have to thank all, all yours for the, con for the contributions, for the questions and that you have listening. And I hope I will see you on Sunday. Yes, Stefan. How are you? Yeah. Everything ah, is okay. Yeah. Abu. Yeah. Hello. Nice to meet you, Abu. Yes, I was a little bit late, but still I have followed your lectures. Uh, very nice. Uh, why did you yeah. follow you if you know everything? Yeah, it is very nice for diagnostic. Uh, radiology is also important for our part of the world. So I think it is a good uh, lectures. Yeah, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, you are again here. Yes. The day yeah, I will tomorrow. do some. I will do something for interventional radiology. This is a little bit more complex. Yeah. Is, I found it good that you really make two talks it's because the interventional radiology is easier to, to, yes. to be separated. Yeah, yeah. Because there, there are more things to, uh, I mean, the QA, the QA actually here in, 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 in conventional X-ray is more static. In interventional yeah. radiology, you are more dynamic and that's definitely much more to control. And you will yes. see that there are a lot, lot more open questions how to control the dynamic uh, X-rays. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, Stefan. See you the day after see tomorrow. You yeah? On, yeah. on yeah. Sunday. Yeah. See you then. Okay. Bye bye. Yes, Janna, bye -bye. everybody is okay. Thank you. Yeah. See you again. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thanks to all the participants for their interest in the next program. Um, I would you. like thank to thank Dr. Gulam Abu Jakaria, Founder Chairman SMPCR, uh, and the entire team of SMPCR whose tireless effort made uh, have this platform functional for us. Um, we appreciate your presence here. We'll see you on uh, next time. Our next program on uh, 12 June 2021 on City Physics Technology Immense Quality in City. Yes. Thanks to everyone. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for you. moderating. Thank you very much, Anna. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Stay safe. Okay. See okay. you. Goodbye. See you. See you. Goodbye.